When we are invited to share our stories, we, we feel enabled, we feel we have power, we, are, we feel as though we really exist. Somebody is seeing that we are here and they want to hear what we're feeling and what we're thinking about and what we've experienced. Not just to hear our stories, but possibly to learn from it as well. So we become each other's teachers and each other's doctors because in the process of telling our stories, we're able to let go of some experiences and feelings that maybe we need to let go of. And in the process of telling our stories, sometimes we're able to draw back a bit so that we can see those experiences from another viewpoint. And then we have, hopefully, in some cases, an aha moment where we've learned something that we hadn't thought about before, not just for ourselves, but also our listeners sometimes have that aha no moment. And they, all of a sudden, if they've experienced something similar, they don't feel as alone anymore. Somebody else went through what I've gone through. Or somebody else thinks that this is important, and I always thought it was important. You know, so there's a sharing there. Orlin, I remember you saying that it's your job, your task of tasks in life, to help the kids on the street tell their stories, but also to tell them stories from the outside world that might help them. How can an old myth like the Iliad help kids on the street today? Well, this is a, uh, that story gives us the background to mentorship. The whole idea of journeying was to make the person move from their place of origins to a place of destination. So destiny and destination are the same thing. Where are we going? And so when a person is stuck even in the street, there is a level of destiny that wants them to navigate those streets and find even a certain way a guide. The streets have guides. Wonderful. Can you describe the actual project that you're involved with there? Who are those kids? Well, uh, our, our work for the last 18 years has been centered in the organization we founded called Shade Tree. And in this particular clip we show uh, some young friends were visiting from Germany, one from Brazil, one from South Africa. And so they were here for an internship to explore social entrepreneurism. And this particular day I was introducing them to Elvanzo, we call him Red Man, for them to get to know his story. The storyteller is a host when you're telling the story of not just the story itself, but those who are listening to it. I was born and raised at, right across this here way, is uh, Markham Middle School. Uh, well, we call it Thunderdome. <laughs> As a youngsters, uh, that's where the gladiators are. Made. Yeah, where well, it was gladiator school. Where <laughs> that's where it all the like this bridge. I remember when it wasn't a bridge, but but uh, it's just like the train tracks. Is, yeah. It divides us from the crypts to the blood. This side here would be the crypt side. That side over there would be the blood side. Uh, how, yeah. how does that that middle school relationship affect the, I mean, the later supposedly opposing gang sides? I mean, you got friends from that are, that end up in the bloods. Mm -hmm. How do we cross into the social consciousness whereby you can meet a person and get to know their relationship to their neighborhood, to their life, by walking the place with them. In the sense of that, we will give each other, since we know one another, and he's a crib, and if I'm a crib, and he's a blood, and, and so we knew how, and we had that mutual respect for one another, so I wouldn't fight him. I'll fight his homies, though, but I wouldn't, I'll get him a pass because me and him cool. Uh, but other than that, you know, you gotta let the hood be the hood. And, yeah. Just let him know, okay. We was these juvenile hall, man, juvenile hall kids that was real, 
was young bastards around here to see a joint, man. We made, we caused a whole lot of ruckus when we was younger. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, made it, we made it out here, man. We, we still surviving, man. My best friend, he just, man, he got shot over 16 times. 13. 13 times, man. And he made that, um, he made that agreement, man, to live, man. And uh, he's a survivor like I was, man. Being shot 10 times, he been shot three more times than me. Man, one of my survivors, man, one of my partners, man. Because we didn't want to die. <laughs> we wanted to make, we wanted to survive to make sure that we get the, you know, man, to do, I say, to do the revenge part, but it ultimately, man, to see your family, man. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? So, you live in a whole nother path now, man. Uh, all means. The bridge has both the symbolic and the reality behind it, too. Yeah. So people always say that there's two sides of the tracks, but <laughs> a bridge is not on two sides, it's on both sides, yeah. yet it's not. And so the potential is that there could be an imagination for bridging whatever is dividing this community. Okay.